Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash and Superman Lois. Today we're going to be talking about lots of stuff, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So today we're mainly going to be focusing on the Flash film rather than the Flash TV show, although we will bring up the Flash TV show over the course of our discussions, and then we'll lead on to some more Superman Lois related content later in the videos, so it's a nice mix, and hopefully you guys like it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So this is coming from Warner Brothers themselves. So according to their website, and I'm on their website and I'll link it in the description below, they have released brief descriptions of their upcoming films in 2022, along with the cast that is obviously the main feature cast in those films. And so this is according to their preview, so not coming from any weird source or anything, but if you go to the flashes section on this website, you can click it yourself and have a look. But under the cast of the Flash film, which comes out on November 4th, 2022, so in just under a year, the official cast is this. Ezra Miller, Ron Livingston, Michael Keaton, Kirstie Clemens, Michael Shannon, Aunt J. Truer, sorry if I butchered her name, Sasha Calais, and Michael Keaton. So what's interesting about that? Well, if you're reading it, you'll be like, huh, there's two big names that pop out from that list because Two of those names, Michael and Anche, actually haven't been attached to the film as of right now, and they've both played big parts in the past in the DCEU. Now, who did Michael Shannon play? Well, of course, he played Zod in Man of Steel. And you have to remember that Michael Shannon's version of Zod died in Man of Steel after Henry Cavill's Superman killed him by stamping his neck. Obviously, that's an iconic scene, and the DCEU definitely aren't going to tread lightly on that. I doubt that they would wreck on it. So, what's actually going on here? So we have these two Man of Steel characters returning, so I'm going to presume it is those characters from another Earth, and that's what we're going to be getting, because if you guys remember, the Flash film is about the multiverse, and at first, I believe it was titled Flashpoint, just like the comic book, and the rough storyline is Flashpoint, and that's how you're getting all these different versions of the characters showing up, like Ben Affleck's Batman, Michael Keaton's Batman coming in, playing that kind of Thomas Wayne figure in Flashpoint. So you can presume we're going to be traveling to all these different timelines and all these different Earths, considering that this is multiverse and it isn't just Barry time traveling all over the place. So with that, we can expect lots of cameos and lots of different Earths, Similar to No Way Home, of course, which just came out recently, which is Marvel's version of the multiverse, and obviously we've done the multiverse first in DC, with the Arrowverse and especially the Flash heavy on the multiverse, and even on Crisis on Infinite Earths, you had Ezra Miller's version of the Flash from the DCEU crossing over with Grant Gustin's Flash. We're going to talk more about that and the potential of who else could come in this film a bit later on, but as of right now, Seeing Michael Shannon and Anche actually on this list is kind of crazy because that confirms, yes, you're going to be seeing characters like Zod showing up in the Flash film, but it might not be that version of the character. It could be a completely separate version and completely different. You guys have to remember, even Ezra Miller's Flash, you're going to be seeing another version of him as well. So there's going to be a lot going on, but the description for the film is Ezra Miller stars as Barry Allen, aka The Flash, who pushes the limits of his superpowers in the DC superhero's first ever standalone feature film. So yeah, that pretty much does it for that segment of the video. We're going to continue to talk about The Flash a bit. Like I said, we're going to talk about who could potentially cameo in the film, considering that we have all of these different confirmations about these old characters showing up. But before we talk about my theories, let's talk about something that Kevin Smith talked about the other day. Now, this is coming from an article on Screen Rant. I'll leave it in the description below. But they basically pulled out a quote from Kevin Smith, and Kevin Smith says this about the Flash film. If they want to do a No Way Home, though, they better bring in Christian Bale as well. If I'm them, I'm backing a money truck up to Christian Bale's, just begging to get him for two minutes so we can have our No Way Home. Now, what would you guys think about that? I think that would be great. However, we do already have two Batmans in this film, and yes, this is heavy on the multiverse, 
and I don't think we're going to get a heavy multiverse film from DC for quite a while until maybe we get like a Flash 2. So Kevin Smith is right, this is their No Way Home, this is their first multiverse film and even like after No Way Home they've got Doctor Strange which is the next MCU film coming out which is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That's going to be dealing with the multiverse and if DC wants to deal with the multiverse they're going to have to go big and I think people are going to be really excited about the Flash film especially it coming out after No Way Home where everyone's losing their minds about all the different cameos and the proper big featured roles from these returning actors and returning characters so hopefully we get something on that level in the Flash film and like Kevin Smith says Christian Bell as Batman would be insane I would lose my mind I think everyone would lose it if they managed to do that but there's no confirmations around that as of right now apart from just wish fulfillment like hopefully he shows up Okay, so let's talk a bit about my theories in regards to the Flash film. So, we know Supergirl is showing up. We have Sasha Calais, who was cast a while ago as Supergirl. I'm so excited for that because Supergirl is gone and hopefully after this film, we'll get Supergirl getting her own DCEU film. And it seems they are really going in for these non-Superman type films, which is great. And we get to see these other characters like Blue Beetle just got shifted from HBO Max to a full theatrical release. They're filming Batgirl right now. So we get these different alterations of these classic characters like Batman and Superman. So we're gonna get Supergirl hopefully and we're getting Batgirl at the moment. And so with that in mind, who is going to show up? Well, I think it's possible that Melissa Benoit's Supergirl could show up for a small cameo if they're wanting to have, say, two different versions of Supergirl establishing them in the same universe because you have to remember, like I mentioned earlier, the Arrowverse is canon to the DCEU at the end of the day after what happened in Crisis. However, they can say, oh, Crisis wiped all of this out and that's why you're not going to be seeing all of these Arrowverse characters showing up in the DCEU, or specifically the Flash film. But I think one that's on everyone's list, considering this is a Flash film, is Grant Gustin's Flash. Because if Grant Gustin's Flash never existed, I don't think this version of The Flash would be this big. And now, everyone compares the two of them. Who's better, Grant or Ezra? And most people come to the conclusion Grant is better, just because, you know, the TV show is good. And yes, some people don't like all the seasons, but there is some really great moments in The Flash. And everyone agrees, yes, Grant is the best Flash. He is amazing. So with that in mind, and with them already having crossed over before in Crisis on Infinite Earths on The Flash, it would be stupid to not include Grant's Flash even for like a two minute cameo. And like Kevin Smith said, no way home style it and just go for it. Include all these characters, you're already having Michael Shannon show up as a different version of Zod. Why not have The Flash from another Earth? And I'm willing to bet it's probably about 70% likely we're going to be seeing Grant Gustin in the Flash film. I would say for Melissa Benoist it's much less likely, although it would be great to see two Supergirls on screen together. I would probably say it's about a 25% chance that she shows up in the film. But in regards to other Arrowverse characters, I'm going to say it's less likely because I do think they want to focus on the DCEU and not include the Arrowverse that much, although they are linked and maybe you will see like one cameo like Grant. But if they're going to be introducing or reintroducing other characters, I reckon it's going to be from past DC films. So I think Christian Bell is a good bet, although I think it's pretty hard for them to get him down to do that, especially considering how separate the Dark Knight is from the DCEU. But I think someone like George Clooney, there's definitely a possibility he could show up, although he isn't a big fan of his version of Batman. I think if they paid him the right amount of money and it was a good story and it was a nice kind of redemption for him, similar to what they did in No Way Home with a certain other character, it could be great for him. So tell me your theories in the comments below. Who do you think is going to show up in the Flash film? Do you think any of the people that I'm thinking about is a possibility? I really do think Grant is the most obvious and, you know, would be the best pick to actually show up. So let's move on from here. Let's talk more about Superman Lois. So Superman Lois is coming out very, very soon. Season 2 is going to be premiering in January, January 11th on a Tuesday. 
and this is going to be at 8 p.m. Central Time, taking over from The Flash's normal spot. As all of you guys know, The Flash is on a long break, it's not going back till March, and Superman Lois has been on a break since August when it finished Season 1. And so they've been filming Season 2 for a long time, and we've seen behind the scenes photos, behind the scenes videos, they released like a little behind the scenes reel at DC Fandom, but they didn't release a trailer, but then a couple of weeks ago, they released a trailer for Superman Lower Season 2, and we've talked about it in multiple videos over the last couple of weeks, but it seems like Season 2 is really going to amp up the drama to another level. This is the synopsis, and this is what we're going to be breaking down mainly in the Superman Lois segment of the video. So, Episode 1 of Season 2 is titled, What Lies Beneath, and this is how the synopsis goes. Gregory Smith from Everwood directs the Season 2 premiere. Season 2 opens with dust settling in Smallville following the shocking outcome of the confrontation between Tao Ro and Superman. Lois and Clark struggle as a couple while Chrissy adjusts to running the Smallville Gazette with Lois. Jonathan faces new challenges on the football field and secrets threaten to destroy Jordan and Sarah's growing relationship. Meanwhile, Kyle grows concerned over Lana's involvement with a new mayoral candidate. Lastly, John Henry Irons and his daughter, Natalie, attempt to make this new Earth their home. So this is one big synopsis, it teases a lot, so let's break it down. So the first part is, Season 2 opens with the dust still settling in Smallville following the shocking outcome of the confrontation between Superman and Tao Ro. Obviously that was expected, so it seems in terms of the timeline where Superman Lower Season 2 picks up in its opening is going to be somewhat soon after the concluding events of Season 1. It's possible that they could start it pretty much straight away afterwards, however it says with the dust still settling, so you can kind of presume some time has passed and then that's where we're going to pick up. And so Lois and Clark are going to be struggling as a couple. Now, I don't know what specific thing is going to be causing this, but in the trailer recently, there was a few lines and a few shots that led us to believe this would be a thing. But it seems that they will overcome it and they'll have to overcome it together in order to basically reform their family to be a great family like they've always been. And so, meanwhile, Chrissy adjusts to running the Smallville Gazette with Lois. We know that there's going to be lots of reporting and lots of journalism in Season 2, even just from the photos that was released the other day, which you can see on the screen right here. Lois is going to be running the Smallville Gazette with Chrissy, and Jonathan is going to be facing new challenges on the football field. I don't know if this relates to anyone specifically, but as you know, he hasn't had the greatest success, especially last season. And a big part of his story last season was the fact that he was overshadowed by his brother and him gaining powers. So could one of his new challenges be that maybe his powers start to grow? I don't know if that would be repetitive considering that that is pretty much what Jordan went through last season. But it would only make sense if they eventually got round to Jonathan getting powers because at the end of the day he is part Kryptonian. So it would make sense if at some point his powers come out and it could be this season. But let's move on. So let's move on from here over to Jordan and Sarah whose relationship is growing, but secrets threaten to destroy it. I would presume that is secrets between the two of them. I don't know what could be so big that it halts their relationship. But like last season, I reckon his story is still going to be about his powers as well as his relationship with Sarah. And as I've theorized about many times before, especially over the break, I really do believe that they are continuing Jordan's story in regards to his powers and him eventually becoming a version of Superboy, and I would place a bet maybe is going to happen this season, probably towards the end of the season, I don't think it's going to happen straight away, but it would be great to see him fully suit up in this season, but for now it seems at the start of season 2, his main focus is going to be on Sarah and their relationship. Okay, let's move on from here, so Kyle grows concerned over Lana's involvement with a new mayor who potentially could be the mayor. We saw some photos the other day and we discussed this. It seems Kyle is going to be taking a turn and we thought that Kyle was the one involved in this new mayor's campaign, but it seems according to this, it's Lana. Now maybe Kyle is jealous or something and he's growing concerned over Lana spending a lot of time with this person, but from the photos, he's wearing a shirt, he's all excited, 
I would say he's probably going to come round to it and they're going to be supporting this new mayor and maybe this new mayor is going to make some big important changes for Smallville just like Morgan Edge promised but actually like properly changing stuff rather than just screwing the town over like Morgan Edge did. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. So, John Henry Irons and his daughter Natalie attempt to make this new Earth their home. So, we kind of theorize about this as well when they release the photos and some of the shots in the trailer because they're going to have to adopt Earth Prime as their home because if they ever go back, they're going to be attacked and probably killed by the evil version of Superman. And as we've discussed many times before, at some point they're gonna have to go back and try and take down that version of Superman because that version of Superman is still terrorizing their world despite them escaping doesn't mean that they are free forever. Talking about Superman, we have Naomi coming out on the same night as Superman Lois on January 11th but this will be at 9pm so right after Superman Lois. Really excited for Naomi, hopefully you guys are. They haven't done a great job promoting the show because I don't think many people know who Naomi is. She is in fact a DC character, she's a pretty new creation, but she is a really great character and I really like her currently in the new Justice League run that they are doing in the comics. I would highly recommend you seek out some of Naomi's stories to get a kind of gist of her character the way she is, and her powers. But there is a specific thing that showrunner Ava DuVernay keeps on bringing up, and it's her connection with Superman. Now, if she exists in a world which is presumably linked to the Arrowverse, maybe it's another Earth, but the interesting thing is that Naomi is obsessed with comic books in the show, and one day, something big happens in her town that makes everything makes sense. So she loves comic books, she loves Superman specifically, and that's mentioned many times throughout the trailers they've released. Her obsession with Superman is an enormous thing in the show, in what forms Naomi as a hero. But with this big change and this big event in her town, she'll realize why she's so obsessed with Superman, and that's going to be a big deal. So I reckon at some point you're going to have the inevitable crossover between Superman Lois and Naomi because technically Naomi is set in the Arrowverse, although like I mentioned, could be set on another Earth, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day because our characters can travel across the multiverse, it's no problem. But it would be obviously super fitting considering Naomi's obsession with Superman and the fact that she's probably never met Superman before because she's reading about him in comics. And according to Ava DuVernay, the showrunner of the show is going to blow Naomi's mind and it's going to be more seismic and cosmic than anyone could imagine. And she teases to not believe everything that you think because that is what Naomi is about. So it seems what they're setting up with Naomi, especially in season one at the start, I don't know how many specific episodes it is, but we're going to be leading towards some sort of big revelation which links Naomi to Superman and we'll probably get the reveal of where she is actually from and her powers and why is everything going on that is going to go on in the show. Obviously we don't have the exact details about how everything goes down, but we know it's going to be huge when it happens. So you guys, you have to note down Naomi and do your research before the show comes out because I'm really looking forward to it and you guys should be as well because Naomi is awesome in the comics as I mentioned many times throughout this video. But go check out the trailers if you haven't checked them out, they're all online. Just type in Naomi trailer and you'll find them. And yes, it isn't the most shocking name, it isn't like a full-on superhero name like The Flash or Supergirl or Arrow. It's just a name, it's Naomi, but in the comics, she is strictly known as Naomi and that's it. She doesn't have a superhero name, her real name is her superhero name. It's like if Clark Kent went by Clark Kent instead of Superman. But I should mention she isn't Kryptonian and that isn't the shocking reveal. The shocking reveal is the connection between them and why Naomi feels so strongly about this character that she is literally just reading about in the comics. So I'm really intrigued to see what actually is going to happen. And even though this is being teased as a huge TV show with lots of big cosmic things going down, it's going to be primarily about a girl and her life and her friends and apparently there's a cool set of friends that she has. 
introducing another hero that is going to be of like a teenager type age so this definitely fits into what's going on on Superman and Lois with Jordan developing his powers wouldn't it be cool to see all of the teenage heroes teaming up with their own version of the Teen Titans obviously it wouldn't be cool Teen Titans but imagine we had a big crossover with all of these younger characters would be pretty cool you could include Mia Queen because she is the daughter of Green Arrow although she isn't as young as these heroes I just wanted to bring that up because I've been asked many times, especially recently since we've been theorizing about, you know, a Legion of Superheroes spin-off show, which is actually happening on HBO Max, although it's not Arrowverse related, and the potential of these Supergirl characters coming back like Nia and Brainy. People are definitely interested to see a kind of Teen Titans type show in the Arrowverse. But that about does it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around throughout the whole video. Sorry it's a bit rambly. I had a lot to break down and talk about. But hopefully you're excited for the Flash film and for all the cameos that are going to be potentially happening. And also the two CW shows which are returning on January 11th. That being Superman Lois and Naomi premiering for the first time. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new, and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.